Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Halloween is only around the corner, and I think the best way to celebrate this is to do some Halloween themed builds. Today, we're going to place our focus on Necrochasm and Necrotic Grip as a deadly prismatic setup. If you like the idea of unleashing pure chaos against enemies you face from poison, unraveling, explosions, and some other messed up effects, then let me show you how cool this build might be just for you. Before we start, what Halloween themed build would you like me to do next? Be sure to comment in the comment section. Starting with the general aim and the of the build, our aim is to showcase the power of Necrotic Grip and Necrochasm for this build, while also leaning heavily into the melee side of the build. For this, we will be using Necrotic Grip and Necrochasm. Starting with the exotic armor, Necrotic Grip, with its exotic effect, Grasp of the Devourer, it states, damaging a target with melee poisons them dealing increased damage over time. Defeating a poison target spreads the condition. Nicole Grips are one of the many powerful exotics that can escalate damage on the given field and also wipe out a wide number of enemies without the user's input. Combining this with another weapon of sorrow is where the exotic excels the most in, hence why I'm using Necrochasm. While this exotic effect is activated solely by melee kills, it can also work with weapon of sorrows and trigger through their main effects as well. This is ideal for what we are running, as Necrochasm Exotic Effect can trigger an arc explosion that affects others caught by it. Once one enemy is affected, pretty much a chain reaction is created, and thus anything caught within our radius will also be affected and so forth. Our second exotic is the Necrochasm with its exotic effect, Curse Bringer, which states Precision final blows with the weapon triggers a curse fire explosion and increased reload speed for a short time. A final blows with a cursed file explosion refills the magazine. When the cursed file effect is triggered, it will also trigger Necrotic Grip's poison effect within the radius of the explosion given. This basically allows the weapon to have a knock on effect, to where anyone killed by the explosion will most likely be killed by the poison and explosion as well. This is handy for group encounters that have a mixture of minor and major enemies grouped up, and will also allow us to save ammo via our secondary and heavy weapons. A player is safe, I've included the Sustained Fire Seasonal mod for the extra damage resistance gained from shooting targets, and would also recommend you do the same as it's free damage reduction overall. If you don't have this weapon though, then the Thorn or Ostrostriga are good alternatives with similar features. For aspects and fragments, we have the following Feed the Void, where getting an ability kill will grant you Devour, Helion, where catching your class ability will produce a solar mortar that scorches targets and can also ignite them. A Facet of Grace, where defeating targets with connect weapons will grant bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super will grant you and allies bonus transcendence energy. A facet of Protection, where while being surrounded by combatants, you gain damage resistance from incoming attacks. A Facet of Hope, where while having an element of buff, your class ability regenerates quickly. A Facet of Balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grant you melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants you grenade energy. And Faster of Dawn, where landing a melee hit will grant you Radiant. Powered melee finder blows grant you and allies the same bonus. With the build's strong melee centric theme for causing as much chaos as possible, I believe the given fragments suit the build quite well for the overall case. As a requirement, having arcane needles for melee, Faster of Grace, Balance, and Dawn are what I would call the must haves for the build. Arcane will of course grant you unraveling and also grant you free charges of your melee, which is perfect for getting radiant constantly and also triggering narcotic group's effect. You then have balance, which is a neutral fragment, perfect for any build that is ability focused. And then lastly, Grace will be quickly enhancing how much transcendence energy we get from start of a fight to the end. This one is key for activating and spamming our abilities non-stop once our transcendent state is ready to be used. Everything else is standard to the kit and doesn't really require much change for the user. But say if you wish to add in the facet of solitude instead of protection, for example, then I can see room for you to go ahead and do so. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Resilience, we have R's at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I've added the harmonic resistance, which will reflect which super I'm using. I have also got on the seasonal mod to stay in fire which will also grant us additional damage resistance as we use our AR. A discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via storm grenades. 
storm grenades have a wide AOE radius compared to most of the other grenades we have, which makes it useful for clearing out or disrupting large groups quickly. As the build is leaning more into the melee side of things, I would recommend increasing your melee stat as well, but this can be optional if you have the Pugilist perk on hand like I do. With this being the case, both your melee and grenade options can be vastly spread out to what you desire the most. I would now recommend you add the extra mod just to help you out some more. Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% midi buff, Bolstering Detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff, Outreach for a 12% mini cooldown, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods we then have the following Ashes to Assets for granting super energy via grenade kills, Connect Siphon for creating all the power via Connect Weapons. Heavy Ammo Finder, Reserves and Scavenger Mods for a Heavy Weapon. Charge Stop times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. Kinetic Weapon Surges times 1 for a 10% Kinetic Weapon Buff. And Powerful Attraction for automatically collecting orbs of power when using our class ability. As we have covered our exotic priming weapon, I would then advise you to pick some suitable weapons for the build as well. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits toward the build. In secondary, we have the Corrosion with Pugilist and Swashbuckler. I choose this weapon as it leans heavily into the melee side of the build like shown, and the following is a pretty good weapon to come out from this season. This is the role I recommend players to get as it will keep our melee charges fully up while also giving us that extra weapon buff. Its passive trait is also useful for additional damage, but it's not anything too game changing. Heavy, we have the Song of Eryut with Rewind Rounds and Target Lock. This is also recommended to have as his passive trait works well with our melee side of the build. Outside of that, the following perks are perfect for unleashing a torrent of damage against the bigger enemies as we play along. This alone makes it a fitting to use when we need to deal with bosses quickly. Free to play players, the Swarm Machine Gun from Zavala is the closest weapon to get that plays similar to Eryut. Personally, I prefer the Swarm as it's slower to fire and it has better ammo reserves overall. The combination of Narcotic Grip and Necrochasm isn't a familiar combo that many people are used to, since the acquisition of the weapon requires a raid completion, and Necrotic with Fauna Osseo seems to be the most common usage of the weapon overall. Now if you do have the weapon, now is the perfect time to use it this season, since we have seasonal mods that improve AR's usability, and Necro has also received a exotic buff quite a while back. The Curse-Bring effect can also trigger Necrotic Grip's poison effect upon landing now, and the position of finding a blow with this and having the two in hand allows ad clearing to be sped up with the additional damage applied. I don't believe this was possible before, but now this is the case, it can really impact how fast you can take on the leader of enemies on your own. But that's not all, as our melee we are using is arcane needles which can trigger unraveling rounds on the targets upon landing on them. This can then trigger faster of dawn for the extra damage buff along the way which will also activate Feed the Void for the health recovery and grenade regen. Lastly, when things do get dicey, our heavy machine gun has the Curse Fire passive trait where defeating enemies with a melee will allow weapons to explode targets for a few seconds. As provided, everything is being linked back to each other one way or another, and this has the cascading effect of improving our damage, survivability, and overall effectiveness within what we are aiming for. Outside of the fragments and mods selected, this run of the mill build can be replicated as long as you have a weapon of sorrow on hand. This means players who have fallen or only have the critters and weapons, you can easily use this build to your liking for the season, the next season, and pretty much so forth. So, go forth and have some hive fun. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.